Good morning guys. So it's been a little while since um, we last chatted. Um, the last few weeks have honestly been pretty like mundane, just kind of getting into a rhythm um, and a pretty good schedule. It's crazy to think that um, I'm almost halfway through my first semester of law school. Today is Monday, September 27th. Um, this week is probably going to be a pretty crazy week. On top of just my usual like readings and stuff like that, I have four different assignments due for each of my classes. So, um, on top of my like usual legal writing assignments, um, my property torts and criminal law professor all gave like assignments. Torts and crim are optional, but um, I want to do them anyways just to kind of like test where I'm at understanding the material since UT law does not do midterms. Um, I'm a little envious of my friends who go to other law schools who do have midterms right now just because um, even though I'm sure that it's nerve-wracking studying for a test right now, um, I would kind of like to know how I'm doing in my courses, at least as far as like comprehending the curriculum. So even though these two assignments are optional, I do want to, you know, attempt them anyways um, and then just get like a, you know, kind of a good gauge of where I'm at material-wise. Um, the property assignment is not optional. I did not know this, but since my property class is five hours long, um, apparently that means that I have to do two assignments in it. I think that kind of goes for most of the five-hour law school classes. So I had started it last night, got a good outline going. So today I kind of just want to refine it. Um, you know, touch it up a little bit, make sure it's consistent with word count, and then just submit it tonight so that way I don't have to worry about it tomorrow. And then for my legal writing class, we throughout the last month have been like working our way through writing the discussion session of a memorandum. So, you know, this assignment that's due on Friday is going to be like the full complete discussion section. So, you know, we've been building on our work for the last few weeks, and this will be kind of like the culmination of that work. So it doesn't look like it's going to be a whole lot. I feel like we did a lot of the heavy lifting earlier in the semester, and this is kind of just wrapping it up, writing the conclusion and the counter analysis. So I'm not too stressed about that one. Um, it's these tort it's this torts and criminal law assignments that have been kind of making me nervous which is strange because they're not like for a real grade. I think just kind of like testing my knowledge and seeing where those are at, that's what's kind of stressing me out. Um, but that's kind of what's hanging over this week as far as assignment wise. We've got the usual readings. Um, and then this weekend is actually my alma mater's homecoming. So I'm gonna be going to that since I'm on the alumni board. Um, but so that's going to take away like my entire Saturday, um, which means, you know, that leaves basically like a little bit of Friday and Sunday to get like some reading done. Honestly, I feel like I've been doing pretty well with my readings. Um, some days are a little more hectic than others just because Wednesdays and Thursdays are my like heavy load class. So like Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights are a little grind time, but for the most part, I feel like I've been doing really well managing my time. So even though I am, you know, reading quite a bit those nights, um, you know, during the day or other nights, it's not as like bad. So in addition to all of that, um, my declaration of intent to take the bar is due on Friday. And I have no idea if it's going to be done by that time. Um, it's not too big of a deal if it's not done. It just means that when I do submit it after the October 1st deadline, there's going to be a late fee attached to it. Um, and I kind of don't want to pay more money on top of the like $200 I already have to pay just to submit the damn thing. So I'm going to try and see if I can knock it out this week. Um, it's basically almost done, but I think that there's just some components that still need to be done. Like, I think I need to get fingerprinted, um, and I literally don't know when I'll have time to get fingerprinted, so it may be that I'm gonna be shelling out a few more bucks because 
I don't know if this declaration is going to get submitted by the first, but we are going to do our very best. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of what this week is going to look like. Um, today I only had property and legal writing, so um, went to school, knocked those out. Um, and then in a little bit, I'm going to be going to a coffee shop with one of my friends. Um, and we're just going to kind of buckle down and get some work done. Um, so that's kind of what today's going to look like. I'm pretty much all read for property tomorrow. I think there's one more case that I have to read and it doesn't look too terrible. So, um, that means starting tomorrow, um, I can start reading for like Wednesday and Thursday. So, um, that's the game plan for the rest of the day. Anyways, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get some more work done before heading out with my friend and I will talk to y'all again soon. Wednesday. Um, it looks like today is going to be my busiest day. I have three classes today and then after classes I actually have a training for a pro bono project I'm going to be doing. So that's going to be a lot of time <laughs> taken up today. So um, in order to prepare for that I actually ended up doing a lot of my readings for the week yesterday. I'm completely read up on property. I'm completely read for torts. I just need to read for criminal law on Thursday. So um, I've banked a lot of my readings ahead of time. So that way um, I'm not stressing out later today um, because the training is like two hours long at like six. I don't get a class until like 4.10. So um, I anticipated it being a little tight um, considering I do need to eat at some point in between those events. Um, so that was what I did yesterday, hence the long reading montage. Um, but today is also t-shirt day for the society. So I am repping my Cadenia t-shirt. Um, please excuse the clothes in the back. I, my life is in shambles actually, but we we're supposed to have the original society games this weekend. However, with COVID and recent spikes, um, they just decided to push it till February, which is fine. Um, but to kind of get us still involved and in the spirit, we are doing like a t-shirt competition. So whichever society um, has the most people wearing their t-shirts today actually gets a really huge advantage in the games. So they'll actually go, I think, directly to the semifinals. Um, so that's huge. Um, considering Cadenia has won the trophy for the last three years, definitely want to keep it in the family. Um, and for those of you that know me, I am pretty competitive. So um, yeah, I we're wearing the t-shirt today. Um, but yeah, so not much else gonna be going on today. Um, about to head out to classes, uh, property, legal writing, and then torts. Um, and yeah, so have a good rest of y'all's day. Hmm? 
So I just finished up with my pro bono project training. So I figured I'd just hop on and talk to you guys about what I'm going to be doing this semester. So this semester I'm going to be working with the uh, Texas Defender Service um, Motion Project. So basically what the Texas Defender Service is, um, they're an organization that provides um, defense counsel um, with various resources um, to aid their clients. Um, specifically, um, at least for this project, it's going to be capital punishment cases. Um, so, since Texas has a lot of capital punishment cases, or at least quite a bit for like the state compared to other states, um, to kind of like streamline the process, especially in like the trial court stage, um, TDS has a motions bank that they provide to um, to defense counsel. Um, in order to help with that process. I'm really excited to be working on this project, um, uh, not only for like the service aspect, but also just getting experience with writing motions, especially since because I do want to be a litigator, um, motions are going to be a part of that. Since I'm a 1L, I actually have no experience with writing a motion. Um, some people might have worked in like a law firm prior to law school. I am not one of those people So I've never written a motion before in my life. So I was a little nervous about that aspect But thankfully they had um, a, quite a bit of different motions that we could sign up for so they had some that were um, Just edits needed some that were edits and like add content and then there were some that are like build the motion from scratch so I ended up signing up for three just edit motions since this is my first time working with a motion. Um, I kind of just want to see what the format's like um, and then I can contribute through like editing. So the motions I ended up um, signing up for are um, a motion to require the state to identify its mental health expert, um, a motion for jury instructions on the procedure if jurors cannot agree on a special issues question, and then motion for a jury instruction regarding residual doubt as mitigation. Um, so those are the three that I'm gonna work on this semester. Again, it's just editing, um, not even gonna be adding that much content, but it'll at least get me um, like a foot in the door of learning how to write a motion, what a motion's supposed to look like, and you know what it's supposed to like achieve. So. I'm glad I'm going to be working with um, such a good organization that is doing a lot of really important work. Um, so I think it's going to be a good semester for these. Um, and yeah, so we'll I'll keep you all updated on how Pro Bono Project goes, but I'm really excited. <laughs> Okay, so real quick, I want to show you guys what I've been working on this week. So, um, right here is the last little bits of the practice memo that we've been writing for the last few weeks. So, um, we added in this part right here, and this very last bit here, and then we submitted this full entire discussion section. Um, and so I went ahead and highlighted the different sections just so that way y'all can see like the extensiveness that we've been working on this. So um, our discussion section, the general conclusion that would come to, the rule statement, the explanation of different cases and the rule, the application of the cases and the rule to our case, and then the counter analysis. 
So that's the full discussion section of the memo that we've been writing. And then my professor also does like research questions in addition to the actual writing part. So I had to go into like Westlaw and Lexis to look those up. Okay, and then we also had a property assignment due today. So this one was um, honestly not too bad. Um, I condensed it down a little bit, but basically what the assignment was is she gave us like two pages worth of like facts and then we had to go in and like answer the responses to these questions. So like, why are the plaintiffs arguing that the money in the jar was lost? Obviously, this is based on like finders cases. Um, which of the finders cases in our material from class offers the closest analogy to the case? And then, um, assuming that you were retained by the defendant, make the best argument in support of the claim that superior title to the money. Um, so this wasn't too bad. It just takes a little while to formulate a you know, well-structured argument. So that honestly was the bulk of the time spent on it. Once you kind of get the gist of where you're heading with your arguments, typing it up is honestly not too bad. Um, but it is a lot of like thinking power right at the beginning. So that was a little, um, that was a little exhausting, but this was due Tuesday. So um, I knocked it out pretty early this week because I knew that the other two assignments were going to take up some more time. Okay, and then this last assignment was optional, um, but I really wanted to try and get it done anyways since we don't have midterms at UT, um, or at least not like ones that are factored into our grade. I was really struggling to determine where I was as far as like comprehending the material in class. So um, a lot of our professors give some optional assignments like this just as a way to kind of like benchmark where we're at. So I wanted to go ahead and give this one a shot um, pretty similar to the property assignment, um, you're given a set of facts. These, t this one actually comes from. This one actually comes from two separate cases in Arkansas. So you can see that I highlighted the different sections, um, issues, reasoning, holding, things like that, for both cases. So that way I could easily reference what I needed to. And then there were about three, yeah, three responses. Um, and so same basic thing as property, read the facts, answer the questions. Not too bad, honestly. It just takes time to, it just takes a lot of like time and mental effort. So that's why it can be exhausting to get some of these things done.